Welcome to the Museum Resource Centre. I'm standing here surrounded by all different sorts of fossils. Now you're probably wondering, what is a fossil? A fossil is the remains of an organism and evidence of past life that's been preserved into a rock. We're going to look at four different types of fossils today. We're going to look at cast fossils, mould fossils, trace fossils and body fossils. Paleontologists are the scientists who investigate fossils with the aim of bringing the past back to life. Not like Jurassic Park, but just in the evidence that they can discover from the fossils. Let's start with body fossils. Body fossils are the fossilised remains of plants and animals. They tell us what prehistoric animals and plants actually looked like. These could be fossilised dinosaur bones, shells, fish or shark teeth and tree trunks. And today I've got these. These are vertebrae from a cetiosaur. Vertebrae are the bones that make up your spine, which runs down your back. These vertebrae though, even though they look massive, are from the tail of the cetiosaur. Let's now look at mould and cast fossils. Mould fossils are the imprints of the original bone, shell and leaf after the organism has broken down. Mould fossils are hollow and shallow and they contain the imprint of what the fossil actually looks like. This here is an example of a mould. You can see the imprint of the cast fossil within it, just there like that. I'd compare a mould fossil to a bit like a jelly mould, where you're going to pour your jelly in, but you want the exciting shape first. Cast fossils form when the hole left behind by the plant remain or shell or bone is filled with minerals creating a copy of the original plant or bone. Now, they look a little bit like this. They're an imprint of the exact one and they're basically identical to the real thing. I think of these a bit like the jelly. When you turn it out of the mould, it looks like it's a perfect shape. Trace fossils are a bit different. Rather than being the actual remains of the animal or plant, they're fossilised clues about the way the ancient animal or plants behaved or interacted. Trace fossils can provide some amazing evidence of all sorts of different animal behaviour that help us bring these ancient creatures to life. Some animals without hard shells or bones don't fossilise very well. So the only evidence that we have of them are these trace fossils that they've left behind. Here are some examples of trace fossils. One of the big ones is footprints, a bit like the ones at the Oxfordshire Museum we saw last week. These are where the animal has walked along and left behind evidence of where it's been. In this case, in its footprints. These are filled up with sediment and over time they fossilise. There's also feeding trails and burrows. These are a bit like a rabbit burrow today, that then over time is filled in with sand and sediment and fossilises. We also have these. This is a anamite that you can see when you look close, has imprints of fern leaves that have pressed on before it's fossilised and left an imprint with on them. You can tell this means that the ferns were around around the same time as this fossil. The final one we're going to look at is coprolite. That's dinosaur poo. This one here that you can see is a replica. It's not the real thing, but it looks just like it. Dinosaur poo can tell us quite a lot. It can tell us the clues of what the animals might have eaten. It might have fragments of bone or fish scales or tougher plant material in it. It also can tell us 
where the animals might have lived because that remains of their poo shows us where they actually went to the toilet. Ugh. These are the four different types of fossils. How about you go into your garden and see if you can discover 